I'm joined now by Buffalo Sabres prospect and Seattle Thunderbirds goaltender, Scott Ratzlaff. Scott, first of all, congrats on being selected by the Sabres at the NHL draft this year. You know, I, I know the draft was all the way back in June, but I'm willing to bet the memory of it is still very, very clear for you. Take me through that day in Nashville and what was going on through your head when you heard the Sabres call your name on the second day of the draft. Yeah, it was an awesome experience. I was fortunate enough to uh, go to the draft in Nashville and see what that was like. There was lots of sights and sounds to see going down Fifth and Broadway and listening to all the, the bands play the music. And then just the atmosphere inside the rink was awesome. And then hearing my name called by Buffalo was just an unreal experience, like you mentioned there. Still vivid in my mind. And you know, getting drafted and going onto the floor, meeting all the management from Buffalo, I knew that it was a great place to be. And even heading down there for development camp, it's a great spot, great community, and I'm really excited to go there. So you've already got your first development camp in the books with the Sabres. How did the camp go for you? And, you know, how did it feel to finally put on the Sabres iconic blue and gold for the very first time? Yeah, it was awesome. Like I mentioned, Buffalo is a great place, great community. And, we ended up going to Niagara Falls, and that was definitely something on my bucket list I got to see, and development camp was just as good. There was all those high-end prospects there from all over the world, so you got to kind of see what you know people are like from different countries like Sweden and Russia and all that. So I think just seeing what it was like and seeing how high the skill level was there was something that was cool to see, so... So you mentioned uh, experiencing Nashville, walking down the streets, you know, listening to, you know, very heavy country music. Um, but I've heard you're you're a bit of a jazz connoisseur yourself. So, you know, can you tell me a little bit about that? And, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it all started from band class when I was in fifth or sixth grade. Irma had a kind of a mandatory music class that we all kind of went to and I ended up picking the saxophone as my instrument and ended up playing all three of them, the alto saxophone, the baritone saxophone, and the tenor saxophone ended up playing. So that definitely sparked an interest in me early on, and I played it all the way through uh, high school until I went to Seattle and couldn't play anymore. But definitely music is a, a really big interest of mine, and even not only jazz, but like you said, the every country that was there and going to the music hall of fame and seeing all the different pieces like Alan Jackson's guitar or all of the stars that were trying to think on that road that were retired. So just seeing that, you know, city being <clears throat> as heavily influenced by music is an awesome thing. And now uh, have you got any of the other boys in the locker room to maybe follow suits towards jazz or are they still a little hesitant? Oh, they're definitely still a little hesitant. I think it's, it's not very common that you get a lots of guys that play in a band. So, but we definitely bond over music and things like that. So maybe I'll slowly introduce it. Speaking of your teammates, the Seattle Thunderbirds organization had the largest representative representation of players selected in the draft among WHL clubs with six, yourself, Nico Majadovic, Sawyer Minio, Grayson Soch, and Thomas Milich, and Jeremy Hansel. Now, it's obvious there's something in the water in Kent, Washington. So what can you tell me about the Thunderbirds organization and, you know, why the folks over there excel at churning out NHL caliber talent year after year? Yeah, I think it's just our obsession with detail. I think day in and day out practices are you know, high intensity, everyone's wanting to get better. And I think we build off it. And I think, you know, coming into even this year, like you mentioned, all those drafted guys, it's a, it's going to be a younger team, but we got a good core. So I'm really looking forward to that. And both like the management and coaching staff have done a great job fitting players into their roles and also the players accepting their role, wherever that may be. So that bondage that comes with, uh, we over I kind of mentality is huge for the team. And we always kind of had a slogan where, you know, team success kind of leads to individual rewards. So I think the success through playoffs and uh, winning the championship this year and having a good outing at the Memorial Cup helped, I think, everyone with their their draft uh, rank. So following that up, the uh, the water in Kent must be a pretty similar waters, the one in Irma, Alberta. 
for a town that houses a population of less than a thousand people, there's been two players in the WHL, yourself and Jager Furcus, that got selected in the draft, um, you know, in consecutive years. What can you tell me about uh, growing up in the, the little town of Irma? Yeah, I think you could say the same thing about Ken Washington and the Thunderbirds. I think it's uh, Irma's a well knit community and everyone is very driven to taking care of it. I can remember going to the ball diamonds with my grandpa, painting fence posts and foul posts, fitting up the dugouts and things like that. So just volunteer work at keeping the rink and the ball diamonds clean. And then again, like you mentioned with Jagger, I think we've always had a, a competition growing up through school. And it's nice that he's right down the road that we can always go to the outdoor rink or even today we went golf and had a nice round there. So just that kind of, Everybody knows everybody. Well knit community. You can really ask anybody to go out and play some sort of sport. So now let's talk about your goaltending partner, Thomas Millich. When you look at the success the two of you had over the course of the season and everything the Thunderbirds were able to accomplish last season, you know, how special was it for the two of you knowing that you capped off what was an already incredible season by being selected just 10 picks apart at the draft? Yeah, I think that was huge. And I think that just summed up the entire season as a whole. I think we could both mutually agree that those practices and those games where we learned off each other and fed off each other's competitive competitiveness and passion was just rewarding. And I can't thank Thomas Millick enough for, uh, you know, kind of lighting the way. He's been a huge role model of mine. He knows how to handle high-pressure situations, watch him through the playoffs, he stayed poised, he stayed neutral, and I think his consistent day-to-day, -day, knowing what you're going to get out of him, putting him in, in the net was huge. And that's something that I have tried to follow up and try and keep that same mentality. So congrats to him. It was awesome. I heard it when I was getting interviewed in Nashville. A reporter told me that Thomas Millick just got selected by Winnipeg and I wanted to just immediately go on my phone and congratulate him because he deserves it and he's worked harder to get to where he is now so nothing but praise and high remarks for him. Before you were a Buffalo Sabres prospect you were a WHL champion and Memorial Cup finalist. Take us back to that crazy month of, of May and early June where you won the uh championship in front of a home crowd and then headed to Kamloops to take part in the 2023 Memorial Cup. Yeah, like I talked about the championship there, coming so close last year, losing it in the finals to Edmonton was, you know, it was heartbreaking. And to see all how hard those guys worked just to get up to that point, we knew it was just going to take that couple percentage more. So that was kind of our mentality going into last season. And that feeling was just even greater getting that far again and being able to just push it that one more game to win it all and then go to the Memorial Cup and see all the news, all the broadcasters there and all the scouts and all the hype that was built around it. It was just an awesome experience. And, you know, the guys deserved it. They worked hard, so nothing but just it was awesome. You now know what it takes to win in this league. You know, what lessons have you learned from not only last season, but the season before that, you you know, you've been able to combine and, you know, are going to be taken into this season as you and the Thunderbirds get ready to defend your uh, WHL championship? Yeah, I think just the main thing that I'm looking forward to and I think the team is looking forward to is just consistency. I think that's a huge part. And, you know, on a 68 game season and more with playoffs, it's, the games that you're supposed to win, you got to win them and then sneak out a couple more that maybe you shouldn't have. So for me, I just want to give my team a chance to win every single game that I'm put in. And when I'm not, I'm trying to help out the team in the best they can and scoring and defense. So just it's going to be a, a different scenery, I think, with all the guys that are moving up, losing a couple more than most teams. So I think just with our young core, it's going to be an awesome season. And just to learn as much as we can and I think just stay consistent, like I mentioned.